<sighs> I'm just gonna wait until people get on. Hi, one person. Um, wave, say something so I know who you are. I can't see who you are right now, but we're about to get started. Ah, yes. Oh, there's Rena. I love you, Rena. Um, okay, so like kind of what we did last week is just drop an emoji about how you're feeling, one word, how you're feeling. Um, I'm going to go to the scripture of where we're going to be starting from. Um, as you see, our new topic is, hi, Mercedes, um, do an emoji of how you're feeling today. One word, how you're feeling. Um, we are going to start a new topic and I have the scripture. I can just open it. I don't, I don't have, um, I don't have my, the what is it called? I don't have the tablet, so I gotta actually use my Bible right now. The tablet is somewhere. But if you have a Bible, if you want to read over, it's Ezekiel 14. Hi, Sable Girl. Like you just dropped off the face of the earth. Um, put in an emoji of how you're feeling. Hi, Damala. Put in an emoji of how you're feeling. And our new topic is like you see in the um the the description is heart check. And we're gonna be talking about our hearts, and we're gonna be talking about just what's in our hearts this week, you know? Um, and then I read an amazing scripture, uh, well, our amazing chapter of a book. And so I'm going to be talking about Ezekiel or from Ezekiel 14. That's in the Old Testament. He was one of the, I want to say he was one of the minor prophets. I don't really remember right now. I don't want to lie to you because it's not like a Bible study like that. So, but we're going to use a scripture. And so, and then I'm going to ask you guys a question. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you we're in Ezekiel 14 and we'll be talking about that this whole week. Um, unless I get laid somewhere else and just think about what's in your heart. Like that's really what I want you to really be thinking about right now is like, what are the things that you know right now are in your heart? Like, is it bitterness? Is it peace? Is it love? Is it compassion? Is it mercy? What's in your heart right now? Because we're going to really talk about that. Like, I'm going to be transparent as always. And I'm going to challenge you to really think about what you've been harboring in your heart. Because we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> we're not doing nothing. So, we have time to think about what's in our hearts. We have time to think about what's in our mind. We have time to think about what we actually think about. Ooh, ain't that good? You got time to think about what you're really thinking about. What are you talking about today? And so, um, I'm not going to try to go on for super long. Just, I say that all the time, but because I'm in the process of recording something else. That's why I look all cute today. And so, I want to finish recording those videos before I get tired and want to take makeup off. So, we are going to pray because I don't want to be here for too long and... I really think it's going to be great. And I want you guys to think. So, Lord, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone who's hopped on, who's going to hop off. I thank you for those who catch the replay. God, you are amazing. You're awesome. Thank you for keeping our families protected. Thank you for keeping them safe, Father God. And those who are dealing with this virus, Father God, we just pray your miraculous strength. Father God, perform another miracle. Let blind eyes be open, deaf ears be um, to be open, and allow sickness to flee in the name of Jesus. We take all authority over sickness and over fear, God. That we are not given the spirit of fear, but we have all power. That we are more than conquerors. So that means we conquer more than anything else that we could be doing, Father God. And we just thank you for your love, your peace, your shelter, Father God. Allow us to all have the supplies that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Luckily, I didn't say baby Jesus because he's my favorite. If you never saw, um, what is it called? The one they like, Shake and Bake, Will Ferrell. They like all pray at the table and they be like, oh, baby, dear baby Jesus. <laughs> and his wife was like, he grew up. So anyway. um, um Okay, so here we're going to start with Isaiah 14. And I'm just going to do like the first section, one through five. So we'll just take section by section each day. Okay. And I'm going to put a mark so I, for, so I won't forget. Because I will, I will go over and I'll be looking like, what? 
All right, so I read out the the NIV version right now. I don't, like I said, I don't have the tablet with me. And so um, if I have the tablet, we'll be doing the message version. So, or the Amplified. So maybe tomorrow when I get the tablet from, um, from the Honey Boo Boo, um, I will be reading from a different version. But as of right now, we're going to do NIV, what I like to study out of anyway. And so it goes, this is Ezekiel 14, and we're reading verses 1 through 5 today. I'll go back and add it in the, um, in the description. So it says, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me. So that means it's Ezekiel the prophet getting the word of the Lord, you know, directly from God. Um, and that's what's happening. Okay. And so, and it says, son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Therefore, speak to them and tell them. This is what the sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their hearts and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and then go to a prophet, I, the Lord, will answer them myself in keeping with their great idolatry. I will do this to recapture their hearts of the people of Israel who have all deserted me for their idols. And that's Ezekiel 1 through 5. And so we'll just, like I like to do is scripture, like verse by verse. Anyway, so Ezekiel, if you know anything about him, he is an, a prophet. And um, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a prophet. <laughs> but um he was one of the first prophets to actually speak after they went into captivity, right? And so they went in captivity in Bab Babylon for many, many years and um, because they were wicked. They were wicked. And so um, God was just like, God would give him open visions. God would just speak to Ezekiel and then he would relay the message to the people in captivity, right? And so... I was led to read this by someone else that I follow, but I thought it would be really great for us to talk about is because what I realized is that a lot of us are suffering from idolatry. That's why it's a heart check. It's like, what is in your heart that you place above God and before him and you tend to gravitate towards it and you, you tend to do what you want to do with it and then you forget all about God, right? And so um, I looked up the word. That's probably what took me a little bit long. Is that idolatry is extreme admiration, love, reverence for something or someone. Self idolatry is extravagant admiration for or devotion to oneself. And idols are image or representations of God used as an object of worship. And it also means a person or thing that's greatly admired, loved, or revered. So. I let, like, let's really have a heart check. Like, let's really talk about this. Is that God was telling the Israelites that he was tired of them in their hearts. Even if they did not bow down and worship things on the outside, there were things within their hearts that they had placed up an altar in their hearts. And they had, um, excuse me, and they had decided to place above God. Hi, Brittany. Um, pull an emoji about how you're feeling today, Brittany. Um, and so... That's where we're at right now. In this season of life, I want you guys to think, like, if you're the Israelites and what you have in your heart, it's a heart check. What is in your heart that you place above God? What is in your heart that you place above his word, spending time with him? What have you put in your heart that has rendered you ineffective when it comes to ministering to other people? Ministry is just serving, serving other people. Who do you serve? You know, what? What are? who are you serving? What are you serving? Who gives you the instructions, right? And so it it is really interesting that in in Ezekiel 14, God is talking to Ezekiel and he's saying like, hey, these people have come before me and they're requiring and they're asking you because they know that you have a relationship with me, like to speak to to speak to them on my behalf. But the problem is I'm going to answer them directly because they have an issue with idolatry in their hearts. So just think how, how many times when churches was open, how many times you didn't call your friends, how many times you didn't call your pastor, your mentor, your uncle, your auntie, whoever, and you ask them for information or you ask them for 
guidance on certain situations, but then it like it never led you to what you wanted to do. Why? Because sometimes we put more reverence and more respect on some other people's names than we do on God's name. And like something that I really realized um, a couple days ago in this group that I'm in, I think I mentioned it um, last week, was that. I actually had ministry idolatry. Like, ministry became an idol for me. Some of us have marriage as an idol for us. Some of us have children as an idol for us. Some of us have money or, you know, making millions or traveling. Like, it's something that we put so much time, energy, respect in. And we just were, like, we're just devoted to getting that thing more than God. And a lot of us have spent a lot of our time, a lot of our days, a lot of our years praying and asking God to send that relationship, send that child, send that job send that this that that and the other and we don't realize that i don't know what's going on in my street i'm heck nosy it looked like a car accident anyway i'm sorry but then we don't realize that we have put hi tasha put an emoji about how you're feeling today and we don't realize that we have set everything else up in our hearts before god like you're not worshiping an idol like all hell golden calf all hell hair weave all hell eyelashes all hell makeup you're not doing things like that thank you i'm recording other videos so that's why i'm like i'm a little cute today you know i might be cute tomorrow too because i got more videos to record but um but yeah and so that's what we're talking about and i want us to really think about what is in our heart for me like i said i made ministry an idol i was so i have been so butt hurt about people not calling me to preach over their pulpit i've been so butt hurt about people not asking me to lead um worship and to be a part of certain things and i realized that i made that an idol like that was the only way for me to actually serve god and love god when in reality what i'm doing with you guys right now is ministry what i do with people who call me on the phone is ministry the services i've had on my own that's a ministry that is exactly what i'm supposed to be doing and for me to covet someone else's spot and to want it so bad that i will put myself in different situations to uh, be able to obtain it that's not what god wanted for me and that's what I'm saying for you. I'm saying that as women, like if a lot of us are single, is that we make marriage an idol. And the thing is, is that once you get married and once you place that in your heart, God can't tell you nothing about somebody that you really believe is your man. Like, I promise you, I've been there. I wanted to be married so bad and God couldn't tell me nothing. He used people who were close to me and he used people that I really respected and revered and I didn't listen to them because I wanted to be married so bad. And so when I did that, I didn't realize that marriage, my end goal of being married, the end goal of me wanting somebody else's last name and not my own last name had become my idol. And what God had to do in my life, like, ooh, I feel like I'm preaching to myself for real because, sorry, is that what he had to do in my life is that he had to strip that idol down. How? By getting a divorce, by making marriage so miserable for me that I had to realize that nothing comes before God ever, period, period, poo, point blank. You know what I mean? And I'm like, goodness gracious, Lord, like, why did you have to do it that way? But he made me realize I wouldn't have listened any other way. I wouldn't have paid attention any other way. Then after, you know, then before I even wanted to get married, I wanted a baby so bad. Like, listen, I would have unprotected sex with so many people praying and hoping that God would get me pregnant, praying and hoping that God may deem me worthy to have a child, deem me worthy of being a mother. But when I finally got pregnant, I myself lost my baby and I had to realize that me be, being pregnant and me being a mother did not equate that I was worthy of love. It did not say that I was worthy of the calling that God had given me. It didn't say anything, but I was dumb and I was not prepared and I was immature and my child would have suffered. And so for me, I had to realize that whether I've had, and it's in Philippians and Peter's, I mean, not Peter, but Paul says, I'm content whether I have, I've learned how to to live when I had a lot. I learned how to live when I had just enough. I've learned how to live when I didn't have anything because I realized nothing comes before God. Nobody comes before God. No relationship, no child, no anything comes before God. And once I realized that, he has freed me up in a lot of areas to where I didn't feel like 
dang, if I didn't get pregnant because I'm sleeping with my husband at this time, this point in time, then I would never be a mother. No, it's because in God's timing, I was to get everything. In God's timing, I was going to be able to be married again. In God's timing, I was going to be able to write a book. In God's timing, I was going to be able to launch a ministry. In God's timing, you know, the albums, you know, the things that I've been working on in my mind will come to place because they're no longer an idol. Why? Because in God's timing, in God's God's will. There's a prayer where we say um, in Matthew, like what's done on earth is done in heaven. You know, like thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And when you do not have idols in your heart, when you're not harboring things in your heart and you're not saying, God, like if you don't give me this, I don't know what I'm going to do. If you actually say thy will be done, you know, you're allowing yourself to not have the responsibility of making that thing be done. Because when I say, God, let your will be done, let your timing be be like unfold, let your timing manifest in my life, then that means I'm not responsible no more. <laughs> because it's hard being Jasmine and being God. It's so hard. You want to know why it's hard? Because Jasmine goes up and down. Jasmine gets insecure. Jasmine wants to hide in her bed. Jasmine wants to be sleep. Jasmine would rather cuss you out. Like Jasmine would rather like eat cookies and ice cream and watch Netflix and chill. Like Jasmine would rather do other things besides what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And so, but then on the other hand, when I'm trying to be ambitious and I'm like, oh no, God, I want this marriage. Oh, I want this. I want that. Jasmine has been manipulative. Jasmine has been, you know, Jasmine has lied or Jasmine has played the victim. She has done those things in, in trying to be God, trying to manipulate situations. And those situations were not healthy for me. And so I don't know. I just really want us to, it really pricked my heart because I want us to do a heart check. Like what is something that is in your heart? And honestly, let's be honest. What is the state of your heart? Like, where is your heart? Like, if your heart is broken and you know that it's broken, drop down the broken emoji. If you know that your heart is in a growing season, give me a green heart. You know what I mean? And if you know that your heart right now is full, give me a purple heart. Because I want us to really think about it. Like, where is our heart? For me, I know that my heart has been broken for so many years because I wanted so many things and so many people to love me a certain way. And I wanted to be seen in a certain light that I kept breaking my heart by being connected to people who did not give a frank footer about me. Like they didn't care. They don't care. And they're my family. And, you know, they call themselves sisters and friends and stuff like that. They didn't care. You know what I mean? And so my heart was holding that stuff. My heart was harboring that stuff, you know, and it's really like they don't care. But my heart is walking around broken and bleeding because of that shattered in so many things. Like if you know the state of your heart, like really just think about it. You know, if your heart is broken and it's like you're trying to put back the pieces together, like, honestly, I'm going to tell you this. The more you try to pick up the pieces, the more you're going to get broken. The thing that you need to really do is also in Ezekiel. I want to say in chapter 28 is that God will give you a heart, change the heart of stone and he'll give you a heart of flesh. Right. Meaning you're broken, your heart, heart, your hard heartedness. He will take that and he'll give you a new heart. He will renew a right mind in you. Right. And give you a steadfast spirit i want to say i think i said that backwards that's in psalm somewhere but i'm just saying that he will exchange the things that we've been harboring on you know like for me like i'm really just telling you my business right now <laughs> because i can right and it's a private group so if you share it outside the group i'm gonna find you beat you up but um but no like for me like and it's just me really reflecting right just from those few scriptures is that like we're just talking about Ezekiel 14, 1 through 5, right? Read it yourself. Read the whole chapter. We're going to go through the whole chapter this whole week. But honestly, like, the people, we go before people asking people to speak to God on our behalf. But the thing is, we have things in our heart that we don't want to sit down. We don't want to put those things down. We don't want to say, hey, you know what? I can't really fully go to God because there's things in the way and I will rather worship these things than truly honestly say I want to be surrendered to Christ. The thing that I have, the problem that I have with all these people like, oh, this is a great time. Come back to God. Repent, repent. Okay, repent today. But do you not know the history of 
the Israelites, the Israelites repented every time, all the time. And guess what? They kept getting into the same cycle. So yes, I get, we want God to heal the land. Yes, I want Corona to be done. But honestly, and like, this is just me, shoot me later, send me a nasty DM, text me later. But I really want God not to remove Corona until people's hearts are fully surrendered to God. Like, I feel that in my soul. Is that I don't want Corona to be lifted if our hearts are not going to be right. And if you're your heart is not is broken then that means you need to ask God to exchange what's broken so that he can give you a healed heart if you know that your heart is growing like I said for those who just came on um drop an emoji about how you're feeling and then we're asking where is your heart at if your heart is broken put a broken heart emoji if your heart's growing and you're shedding off things put a green emo a heart emoji and if you know that you're you've done the healing of your heart and your heart is getting becoming new and whole and everything is back in place put a purple emoji like honestly i'll tell you that You'll never leave a season of growing. You'll never leave a season of where you get your heart broken. You'll never leave seasons of where you're just trying to figure this thing out. But honestly, I do not want God to lift this up if our hearts are not going to go back to serving him. If our hearts are not going to go back to loving each other. If our hearts are so focused. Oh, I was like looking for my phone. If our hearts are so focused about making TikTok videos and being Instagram famous, then I want Corona to stay here until our heart our hearts are truly pure and our, our minds are truly made up of what we're going to do. Like my thing is you got to have a made up mind. You really have to make up your mind. You really have to say, you know what? I don't want to feel this way because our hearts I don't, it's not our physical heart, but our hearts are, our, are like, it's close to our soul. I want to be like, it's like your thoughts, your emotions, your will. And if all of that is broken down and all of that is confused, you can't truly love God because you have to love your God. Like you have to love God with your thoughts, with your behaviors, with your actions, with, with how you receive stuff, how you perceive stuff. If you don't love God with every being, every part of your being, then what are you really doing? Like, what are you doing? You're not, you're not doing anything. You are still living in idolatry. And for me, I've learned that my idols have been my phone. My idols have been wanting to get my Instagram followers up to a thousand. Like that's been my goal. But I'm realizing that I'm doing more things to get those goals than I am to really just wanting to spend God's time with God. You know what I mean? Like I do, I am growing. I know I'm growing, but in all honesty, I've realized that I've made ministry. I've, I wanted ministry so bad that I put it in my heart. I built an idol. I built that everything I need to do needs to be seen by people who can elevate me in ministry. In reality, that's not what I need right now. That's not what I want right now. I don't want it that way. I want ministry the way that I do ministry. I want to serve people the way that I serve them. I want to love my friends and my family and my significant other the way I'm supposed to love and serve them. I don't want to do it a way that someone else is doing it because that's not authentic to myself. And God is a creator of originality. He's original. So that means he is so creative that each one of us can be authentic to ourselves. So I said all that to say, and I'm saying all this to say is that I really want us to think about what's in our heart. Have you held bitterness in your heart? Have you held frustration about things to that were to come, but have not arrived yet? Have you, have you held anger in your heart? For me, I've been very angry. I've been so angry at people. I've been so upset. Like if you say something that I don't fool with, I promise you, you about to get uh, <laughs> you're about to get like a lashing from me or I'm just not going to talk to you. I've been angry for so long. Why? Because I realized that I've made people loving me a certain way, certain relationships an idol in my life. And in reality that, listen, if God before me, who can be against me? If God is with me, then I'm never alone. And so when I think about those things and I think about that stuff, then I realize, dang, I don't need it the way that I thought I needed that. I don't want that the way that I've been craving and the way that I've been crying about it, the way I've been holding on to it is that, you know, you got to have clean hands and a pure heart. That's the closest way that you're going to get to God, meaning not doing anything shady, not doing anything just like super malicious and evil and vindictive and wicked, you know, having your hands clean, serving those 
who, you know, who may be in more need than you are. Just loving people and being there for people. Clean hands and a pure heart. Meaning what's in your heart? Because the Bible says what's in a man's heart is what defiles him. Not what comes out of your mouth. Not what comes in your mouth. I don't care if you eat pork. I don't care what you eat. I don't care what you're doing. But what's inside of you is what comes out. That's how you show up. And if you show up triggered all the time, if you show up angry all the time if you show up needy all the time if you show up like you're trying to be ambitious but you're, it's only selfish ambition like that's in your heart and I just want us to check our hearts because girls so we ain't got nothing but time and opportunity right now because the whole world is shut down and my prayer is for all of us is that our hearts are steadily being purified our hearts are steadily being pure in the scripture of Ezekiel like I said 14 through 1 they the Israelites came to the man of God the man of God and the Israelites met up that's just like y'all coming to me and saying hey I need God to talk to you for me but God is saying no, because there's something in her heart. She want to be married so god dang bad that she don't want to listen to me. She wants this business so bad that she don't want to listen to me. She wants them friends so bad that she don't want to listen to me. She wants to be Instagram, Insta, whatever famous, Facebook famous. She wants to be known so bad that she doesn't want to listen to me. She wants this job so bad she don't want to listen to me. She want her family to accept her so bad that she don't want to listen to me. She don't want to let go of the abuse, of the mistreatment, of anything that I've that she's dealt with so like she don't want to let it go that I can't get her to listen to me so what's gonna happen is I'm going to make her listen to me directly you can't come in this and you cannot talk to them because they have idolatry in their heart some of us are self idolaters some of us make ourselves so important that we're not that important you're not that important to be more important than god like let's be honest some of us suffer from self-idolatry that meaning you make what you look like you make what you what you um how your face look how your hair look you make everything about you more important than about what God is saying to you. And the thing is, is that we're in a season right now. This right now is proof evidence of right now that we're in a place where we cannot think so much of ourselves that we forget about other people. You know, it's not even to be bragging. Yesterday, I never, like, let me not lie. Hi, Sabrina. Drop an emoji about how you're feeling today. And we're also talking about um, where's your heart. If your heart is broken, put the broken heart emoji. If your heart is growing, do the green. And if your heart is healed and you're ready to move forward in life and put down the purple heart. And so, honestly, like, we really, Ezekiel 14, I'm only reading 1 through 5 today. I'm in the NIV, so you can read any version. But, like, they wanted, they wanted God to really be, everybody wants God to do something miraculous right then and there. But in reality, you have to also realize that you are coming to God and sometimes you're coming to him with what you want. But your heart is saying something else. Your heart is showing him something else. Your your heart is displaying the true character of who you are and what you're about. And I want us to really get that thing dug out. I really want us to really focus on what is in our heart. If if you understand that you're growing right now, that you got to forgive people, you got to let things go. It, I have, it had to come to a point for me that if God never opens my womb to have a child, that God, I will adopt children. God, I will be a foster mother. God, God, I will love the children in my life because God, I don't need to be a mother so bad to prove that I'm a woman. I'm a woman regardless. My boobs and my hoo-ha prove that I'm a woman. I'm a woman biologically. I'm a woman by the way I talk, the way I walk. I am a woman no matter what. So for me, me having kids don't make me a woman. It don't make me more or less. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Me being married, God, if I never got remarried, if I never found someone who loved me, that I want to serve you. I want, you know, and, and okay, so there's someone I know who does not want to do ministry unless she's married. She don't want to move forward in her ministry unless she's married. I had to tell God, I do not care if I never have another man. If another man, if he don't ever rub on my booty, if he don't ever do nothing, if I don't ever have sex again, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. If I never masturbate ever again, God, I'm not going to stop ministry because of a man. I'm not going to stop what you purpose me to do. Some of us have that in our hearts. Some of us walk around just 
trying to get up the corporate ladder, chasing after job after job, people after people. And we haven't realized that who is meant for us, God will open the door for them to come to us. And I've realized that when I stopped forcing things, that more stuff started to come and it was better for me because I realized my desperation was attracting things that were desperately waiting to destroy and to kill me. And I, and I had to realize that, um, I wrote, um, so I have one book that is published out right now, right? But I have another book in waiting and it's called, um, um, the bounce back. I was like, what was it called? It's called The Bounce Back. And it's about like the three, four different dudes that I've dated throughout my whole dating period in life, right? And so I talk about a dude where I was like, you know, like when I was younger and like I, he was he was just so fine. Like, y'all, he was light skin, curly hair. He was fine. But I'm 17, he's 24. Okay, we didn't need we didn't need to be together. Then I talk about another dude who I've dated where he was like 30 years older than I was and I was 18 and so that was the guy that I got pregnant by and I didn't have the baby um, because I had a miscarriage but I realized that he was the epitome of all my trauma and all my pain so my heart was so desperate for a father figure was so desperate from feeling like I was beautiful after being sexually abused and then being raped at 16 that I my heart didn't let that stuff go that it kept attracting people who would do the same things to me attracting people who would be basically my whole pain summed up in human form and i'm like good golly gee whiz <laughs> i'm like whoa and you know and it took years after like of me writing this book last year it took me to realize that that one of my exes like the older ex he was the epitome of my pain of my father pain of my of just being abused like he 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 was perverted like he wanted young girls you know what i mean and it just was like i couldn't i didn't understand why i couldn't find somebody to really love me but then i realized throughout the whole journey and i look back now and i realized my heart had all that on it like when i got married i kid you not i was so angry and the thing is, this person was toxic for me and he brought all that anger to the forefront that everything now in my heart was showing my anger and my pain, my disappointment. And so I'm just saying all of this, I'm sharing all this with you guys is for us to realize like, what, how are you showing up in the world? Because what you're showing up as is in your heart. You know what? I challenge you. Call two, three people that you're really close with. Like not people who you know will give you shade, but call like your close friends and say like, how do I show up in the world? What do you see when you see me? What do you see or what do you hear when I speak? Because when I talk to certain people, I hear their, their dependency. I hear their neediness. I hear their low self-esteem. I hear how they don't deem themselves worthy for anything. And so I'm just challenging us. Call people who you are like really close to and ask them, hey, sis, like, how do I show up in the world? Like, I, like you know, like you know like my heart like you know what I mean but really like do you really know my heart do you know the things that are underneath like underneath everything that you think are is good about me like how am I really speaking to people how am I really showing up in the world like am I putting on a mask do I put on makeup do I put on the hair do I put on everything to show myself differently but when you talk to me you get to really know me you know my heart and the thing that kills me is people think that they know you from knowing you for like a six months three months or a year but it's when you get close and you get intimate that's when you really find out the heart of a person that's when you really find out what's really wrong with them that's why friends are supposed to cover one another but at the same time if you didn't really recognize recognize or you didn't really discern what their heart was really saying and all the times they were speaking then you gotta go back and 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 really just examine how close you want to be last week we talked about being aware of who we allow in this transformation period who do we allow to speak to us speak you know speak life into us who we talk to who we vent to because those people can't very well see what's in your heart 
Because they think you fine. They think you cool. They think you good. When in reality, you are drowning on the inside. Depression is taking over you. Anxiety is take is ruling your day. You know, frustration is so quick. Your patience is gone. You don't know what to do in the next season of your life. You don't know if you're supposed to stay in this career path. Are you supposed to exchange? Are you supposed to move? You don't know if your marriage is going to work. You don't know if you're ever going to be married. You don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. And it's just like... you. You want people in to speak and hear your heart. The real, the real, <laughs> the real, the real stuff in your heart. And so it's just a heart check. Like, let's check our hearts. Let's check our hearts because our heart will really fully, fully show up in how we function. It will show up in who we, how we talk. It will show up in how we forgive. It, it shows up. And you really, and you got to understand that if you don't check your heart, you don't check your heart it will lead you into places because the bible says it is wicked it is wicked like it will lead you to places it will lead you to people who you really believe are for you and they're not for you your heart will lead you to people who you think are for you and they're really not for you and i just want us in the coronavirus the covid 19 season of life is to understand if god never lifts this like if you don't lift this in like a few weeks, a few days or whatever, that you have done the work. So when you step outside of your house and you go back to work, you go back to school, you go back to church, you go back to those those groups and those things that you've done before. And you realize, you know what, I'm, I'm a better person because I got to spend time in inside the house with the with God Almighty. I was able to think about, you know what? I am covered. I am held in the hands of God. And you you got to really think about like you have history with God and he wants to transform you and you went through a transformation period, but you also have to really think about dang, what is in my heart? What is the point? What is the point of going through hell? And you really calling out to God and y'all really walking and talking and grooving and moving and you move forward in life, but you jacked up from the inside. Because once the outside fades, you only have the inside. Once you go out, like if today I decided to go outside and be cute, let everybody see my hair, my makeup, whatever while I'm wearing and I'm like cute and I'm walking around, but I come back inside and I'm just like, dang, nobody loves me. What good is that? What good is that? It, it, there's no good to it. it don't, it's, it's not good to be cute. It's not good to be popular. It's not good to be famous and whatever you want to be. And you realize that you have idols in your heart. You have things in your heart that need to be torn down. And so um, I hope I made sense. I hope I didn't just ramble. Like it really just made me think that um, for myself, I put ministry as an idol. I put children as an idol. I put getting married as an idol. And I realized that there's nothing greater than Jesus Christ. There's nothing greater than the Holy Spirit residing in me. There's nothing greater than knowing that even if I can't physically touch him, that he is always there. I'm breathing him right now. And I'm exhaling him back into the atmosphere that he is all around me. He is in me. And that he activates things within myself. He's given me gifts. He's given me gifts on top of gifts. And that all I have to do is ask him to activate what's in me and I can be better. Like, have you ever thought that you have a power of Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit within yourself to activate and you can ask him, look, this is in my heart. You know what I mean? This is, this is what is totally, totally bothering me. Or this is what I'm trying to, I'm on this, ooh, I'm on this uh, with hamster wheel trying to get to it. I'm trying, ooh, I'm, I'm, by 28, I'm trying to be the CEO of this. Or by 25 or 30, I'm trying to travel to all these different countries. I'm try Listen, you cannot do all that stuff without God. Hi, Brianna. You can't, you cannot do all that stuff without God. You can't do all that stuff without understanding that what's in your heart is what's going to attract, is what is going to attract to you. You cannot under, you cannot get around the fact that if you want a close relationship with Christ, that your heart cannot have things in it that place itself higher than God. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Tasha and Rena, you know, and I'm, and, and that's what I just want us to like to really like be aware of it, be aware of it in this season, be aware that your heart, 
your heart, your heart, your heart needs to be worked on. Is that, yeah, you can watch TV, yeah, you can read stuff and you can renew your mind, but your heart, what is at the heart? Like, what is, you know, what is the heart of the issue? What is, what is it? What is it? What is the thing that's pulsating? What is it that, that drives you in your life? What is driving you? And like I mentioned before, is that rejection and abandonment drove me so much. Like it drove my, it drove my actions. It drove like my relationships. It made me into something that I like I didn't want to be. And I kept trying to figure out why am I like, why do I want this so bad? It's because I don't ever want to feel abandoned. I don't ever want to feel like nobody wants me. I don't want to ever feel like I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy. And that those are the things in our hearts. That when we're praying to God, oh God, give me this job. Oh God, bless my finances. Oh God, make me this. Oh God, change them this. Oh God, bless my children. All he hears is your rejection. All he hears is your abandonment. All he hears is your anger. All he hears is your frustration. All he hears is your doubt. All he hears is your wickedness. That's all that he hears from you. And so I'm just praying that when God hears me, is that I don't want him to hear. I don't want him... I don't want him to hear God like don't nobody want me. I don't want him to hear that no more. I don't want him to hear, you know what, God, they don't really love me. They don't really want to be my friend. I don't want him to hear that no more. Because I want to say, you know what, God, I want to give you what's in my heart. Because my heart is wicked. My heart is faulty. My heart keep leading me into friendships where three months they my friend. They blasting me all over social media. I'm sis. I'm this. They asking me to sing. They asking me to do this. They asking me to do that. And then when they're done with me, they're no longer in my life. God, I don't want that no more. I don't want these things to be so high up that I don't surrender to what you're doing in my life. And it's just like, come on, heart check, one, two, one, two. Like, what's up? Like, what is in your heart? Think about it. What is in your heart? You know what I mean? And you can have a heart that's been growing. You know what I mean? And you're not at the broken hearted phase. You could be, you can have a heart that's growing right now. But then you got to think about, okay, so what is actually growing though? What in, what is growing what what have you implanted when you extracted something else? What ha- what is really growing right now? What 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 are you shedding off to be rebirth to be renewed? You know what I mean? Are you shedding off your self doubt? But are you growing? Are you growing in confidence in the Lord? That's who we put our confidence in. And so I just want us to really think. And if your heart is all the way healed, and if you say my heart is healed, my heart is good, it's 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 great. It's part like it's great. Like I'm I'm operating at a new level, I'm operating in a new season. Then you know what your job is to do? Your job is to guard your heart. Your job is to make sure that you don't allow the things that are within you, the things that have been in your past to come back up. And when you recognize that they there's still roots in there, then you definitely need to address them. And you definitely need to stay away from things that used to harm you all the time. So that's just what I want to share with us. That's what we're going to talk about this week is heart check. Like, there's idols in our heart. There's things that we've placed above God. We sometimes are the idol. Ministry can be the idol. Children can be the idol. Relationships, marriage, school, things that we desire stronger than we desire a relationship with Christ. And we have to understand that our hearts are not pure. Your heart is wicked. It's deceitful. And you really got to ask God to renew your heart, to ask him to give you a new heart, ask him to rearrange some things, take some things out. If, if God can create you a new heart, say, tell, ask him, you know what? Some things in there, I don't want, I don't want bitterness anymore. I don't want frustration from disappointments anymore. I don't want that anymore. What's in your heart? Like, and like I said, I challenge you call two two people that you're close to call them. And ask them, you know what? How do you see me? How do I show up in the world? You know, like what's in my heart? Don't, don't tell, don't let them say, oh, you got a heart of gold. Ask them really like, okay, not on my good days, but on my bad days, what shows up out of my mouth? Because that's what's in my heart. What shows up? What do I speak to you when I'm not having a good day? What do I speak to people when I'm not having a great day? That's what's in your heart. That's that stuff that when you're praying, God is listening. God hears, God sees, because 
Man looks on the outward appearance, but it's God who looks at the heart. And I'm asking us in this coronavirus quarantine is that, yes, we want to be outside. Yes, we want it to be lifted. Yes, we know people who are being sick. Yes, we know people who are dying. But at the end of the day, if do you know what was in their heart? Do you know if they died with a heart that was pure, a heart that was clean? Not because you want them to, not because you're afraid or you're sad of losing people. But if you were to catch this, or if God called you home today, what is really in your heart? Because he's looking at that stuff. Listen, like I said in, in the middle part, the beginning part of this video, I don't want Corona to go away until people have really bowed their knees to Christ, until really people have really repented, not with their mouths, but with their hearts. And when people say, you know what, God, I cannot do this without you. Because when that happens, that's when your world outside, that's when you make better days. Like we were talking about last week, you will make the better days because you are a part of the transformation. You are a part of the change. You are a part of people knowing who God truly is. And if they can't see it because of what comes out your mouth on your bad days, then you know what, sister? I'm going to need you to get some prayer. I'm going to need us to really pray and ask God to deliver us, to deliver you because it is there's no more time to play. There's no more time to play. It's, it's not time to play. It's that you spent 20. Most of us should be 21 and over in this group. You spent two decades, three decades doing what you wanted to do, living how you wanted to live and allowing all this stuff to weigh you down. And you trying to figure out why it's so hard to move forward. Yeah, because you've allowed the things in your heart to take precedence over God and not allowing him to be the Lord of your life. And so um, we are reading Ezekiel 1, 14, 1 through 5 today. Um, tomorrow I'll do Ezekiel. Uh, I'll do Ezekiel 16, 16 through 18. I do yeah, I either do six through eight or six through eleven or twelve. So I'll do that tomorrow. Um but yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns, please leave comments. Um like I said, if you know the love of your heart, if your heart is broken, do do a a broken heart emoji. If you know that you're growing and you're healing, do green. And if you know that your heart is healed, do a purple. Um, we're going to keep talking about the matters. I mean, not the matters of heart, but heart check. Let's check our heart that we have idols in them. That means we have things that we esteem higher than God. And for me, like I said earlier, it was children and marriage and ministry. And I've had to, to tear those idols down because listen, I just want God. Like, that's all I want. Like, I listen, if I ain't got no money, I, I know I got God. And in God, I have everything. He spoke that to me a few weeks ago. I was saying, God, I don't got this. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. And he said, but you got me. And I realized that's everything that I need. And I know the things in our hearts become, they become ingrained in us. You know what I mean? Because I believe our spiritual heart is really our thoughts in our mind. It's, it's, I really believe it's our mind. And that you have to really understand that the way we think, the way we feel, our emotions, all of those things, those things cause us to act out and to be attached to people and to things and have addictions and have crutches and stuff that are not okay with God. And every time you pray, you think you're praying about that thing you want, you desire, you're really, he's really seeing those things in your heart that you don't want to give up. So I pray that that blesses somebody. And um, like I was saying, I'm cute because I'm recording <laughs> some other videos. And I just took a break from recording to just us to do this. And we can continue to build some momentum and engagement. Like, I don't bite. Say something. You can post stuff. We'll have one of the moderate two. It's two. I think it's like an admin. I'm the admin and two moderators. And we'll we'll look at it and we'll decide. But um, really, just really think about what's going on in your heart right now. So, Lord God, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time. God, I thank you for just allowing a moment of transparency, allowing us to to think and to challenge ourselves, God. Like, what is in our heart, Father God? Father God, if there's anything in my heart, anything in my sister's heart right now, God, that is blocking our prayers, that's blocking us from hearing you, God, that we've set it up a higher and we revere it and we honor it more and we have so much admiration for it more than what we have from you, God. We tear that idol down in the name of Jesus and we understand and we know that, Father God, 
that there's nothing that is greater than you because if we have you, we have everything, Father God. Renew our minds, Father God, because we'll become the living sacrifice. So we sacrifice our thoughts, our will, our opinions, Father God, for what you say. God, we sacrifice what we've done and the things that we could do for you if it's not in alignment with your will, Father God. We just thank you for, for those who are having hearts that you're shedding off layers, hearts that are growing, Father God. Allow them to plant and to grow the things that are of you, Father God. God, and not more bad habits, Father God. I pray and I'm praising you for my sisters who have healed hearts, Father God, because we've been through some things. We've gone through growing processes, but Father God, allow us to guard our hearts. Allow us to have different behaviors, different values, different ways of operation, Father God. Allow us to guard what you've done in us so that we can be a testimony and an example to someone else, Father God. We just thank you and we praise you. We just worship you and we honor you, Father God, because you know what is in our hearts, God. Let us not put things before you anymore, God. Let not this nation put things before you anymore, God. Let not this world put things before you anymore, God. Because, God, you're looking for people who will worship you, Father God, in spirit and in truth. How can we worship you in truth if everything in our hearts is about what we want and what we want to get from you, Father God? So I put down the things that I've put in front of you, Father God. I put down my ambition and business in front in front of you, Father God. I lay it at your feet. I put down my, my need and my desire to want to have a healthy whole marriage, Father God, at your feet, because God, it's up to you whether I have those things. It's up to you whether I'm a mother. It's up to you about what I get to do in my life. So, Father God, I don't put those before you. So, Father God, whatever it is that my sisters have before you, whatever it is that they continually talk about before you and more than you, before, and whatever it is that they study more than they study your word, God, I just lay it down at your feet that we, we repent, that we turn away from the things that are wicked. We turn away from the things that are not pleasing to you. We turn away, Father God, from drinking. We turn away from just living our lives, just fornicating without any remorse, Father God. We turn away from, Father God, from just listening to things that are not edifying to the body of, of Christ. God, because you said that we are your temple, Father God, that you want to dwell within us, but you can't dwell where anger is. You can't dwell where bitterness is. You can't dwell when there's pettiness. You can't dwell, Father God, when it's full of disappointments and full of mischievousness. So, Father God, we just repent from being messy. We repent from being gossipy. We repent from being jealous. We repent from being covetous. We repent from having self-worth and low self-esteem, Father God, and we understand that we were created in your image, God. We understand that you, God, sit high, Father God. We understand that you look low, but Father God, we also understand that you are the air that we breathe, that your breath is in our lungs, Father God, and we pour out our love to you, Father God. We pour out our grace, our honor, Father God, for the grace that you've given us, God. So we just thank you. Renew our minds, renew our hearts, Father God. Give us a heart of flesh, no longer a stony heart, no longer angry because we didn't have our parents to guide us the way that we wanted them to guide us, no longer angry because our boyfriends did what they did, no longer angry because our friends turned their back on us. They betrayed our secrets, God. We're no longer angry, God. We're no longer bitter, God. We don't want to be just trapped within our emotions of fear, of our emotions of doubt, our emotions of unbelief. So, Father God, we just pray right now that you release us from those things in our heart so that when I pray, my hands are clean and my heart is pure, God. Purify my heart again, God. Purify our hearts again, God. Make it as, as though when we were just knowing you, Father God, make us pure like children again, Father God. Allow us to only seek what is good, what is right, what is lovely, Father God. We just praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know. I just pray that we all just recognize what's in your heart. Hey, Takeda. And we really just need to be mindful of what it is that we show our like it, it just we gotta be mindful of what's in our heart be mindful of what you think about be mindful of what you meditate on be mindful of what you really like i kid you not like i have to tell myself i can't just roll over and be on my phone because that's an idol i i have more admiration for my phone than i do god like you gotta be we, you got to be mindful of what's in your heart and so like i said my challenge to you guys is that talk to two of your friends. Ask them. Oh, now they leaf blowing. Ah, ask them, how do I show up? What do you hear when I speak to you? What do you hear when I'm not, when things aren't going my way? 
and how I'm feeling. What do you hear? And when you realize what they say, are you just allow them to be honest with you? Then you'll realize that, you know what, there's some things in my heart. So, you know, like there's some things in my heart that need to be checked. There's some things in my heart that I need God to take away. And so I just bless you guys and I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going back to record some more of these videos. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye.